You know, I'm a country boy, so I come from the country. Blake Carp does it again! The little big man! I don't have many neighbors, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm kind of just out there by myself grinding. It's a different perspective. Cora, cut back, touchdown, number five! And that ties a Michigan program record. For I come from a small town called Marshall, Virginia. 1,200 people that live there. It's a one stop light town. The college coaches aren't really coming out there, you know what I'm saying? I might have been found, but you never know. When he was young, I knew he was special. Everybody in this county knew he was special. The first two years of high school, he attended Pilates in Laurel, Maryland. When he finally transferred schools his junior year to uh, St. Francis, he boarded there. This is a small town, so I knew, you know, and being in Maryland, the opportunities would be a little different. And you know about these schools. You see these athletes are going to D1s, you know. It was almost a no-brainer. But I knew this is not my dream, this is his dream. And I wanted, as his dad, to give him the best opportunity that I could. My parents would drive two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, and that's not counting traffic. The first two years, the drive was unreal. My wife, Christina, she would drive him there in the morning. So they would leave here, I don't know, 4.30, 5 o'clock. I hated those mornings. <laughs> I dreaded those mornings. But he never once complained. I never had to tell him to wake up. Then I would leave here in the afternoons. Sometimes we wouldn't get back in until 8.30, 9 o'clock. They sacrificed a lot, and I'm so appreciative for that because like, that's where I'm at now. Like I wouldn't have been there if I would have stayed in my hometown. Going back to my junior year of high school, when I first met Blake, we were doing one-on-ones, working out, and I'm like, this dude, he's, he's a worker. So after practices, he would get another workout. After some games, if the game was too easy, he would get another workout in. That's just the type of guy he still is at Michigan. When you talk about his work ethic and who Blake Corum is, he's this guy that texts me at 5.30 in the morning, say, hey coach, I'm going in to get some work in in the indoor. And I'm kind of like, I'm just waking up. One time at Michigan, Blake called and he was like, mom, they locked me out. And I was like, locked you out of what? And he was like, they're not letting me come in and work out. Blake works so much that it's too much. When I got here, I tried to talk to him about rest is just as important. As he's matured, he's getting to that point where he knows, you know, it's okay for me to relax today. That's what I had to learn. And sometimes it's still a little hard. At the end of the day, they know what's right. They've been where I'm trying to go. Here's Corp, Blake Corp. See you later, touchdown, Michigan. For a running back to do what he does reminds me of Peyton Manning when I was around Peyton Manning for three years. He's not going to have any excuse not to be great. He wants to be great, and nothing's going to slow him down from doing that. When it comes to my kids, they're my first priority, so they're my why. You know, me and Blake, we talk about why all the time. You know, why? Why I get up every morning? Why I work 10, 11, 12 hours? You know, why I do what I do? All I can say is me being a father, I gave it all I had. I really like look up to my dad. My dad's a landscaper, so uh, he works long hours, you know, being the boss of the company. I always remember I would be outside waiting on my dad to get home late night, and I would hear his truck back in, like beep, beep, beep. That's really when I remember the, how hard my dad worked for the family. He knew that his dad was coming home, and that was his highlight of his day, like waiting for his dad to get home. <laughs> Dog on you, little man. It's on you, little man. you go. Shoot it. Get it out of here. I've been watching my dad work his butt off my whole life. He needed a little motivation at times, too. I get this video, and it's him outside working in the front yard. And he says, Dad. He's getting his work, dog. You know what I'm saying? You work, I work. You know, them words stuck with me. I'm like, Dad, he, he understands the sacrifice and the hard work that I'm doing to allow him to do the things that he does. I was just telling him, like, you're not alone in this. Like, I'm working with you. Due to COVID-19, we had to quarantine, so uh, I went home and, and I started working with my pops. 
having my son with me. We're on the job site, laughing, working. My guys loved him because he was a workhorse. Took some slack off them a little bit. What I had to do, was I had to go in the woods, and drag the tree limbs or tree branches or tree stumps out of the woods and then put it in the machine so it could cut it up. And that was a workout. In the weight room, weight room strength, that's cool, but country strength, that's strong now. You know, I think this workout that I can put him through is a little harder than what coaching put him through at Michigan. The journey I've been on, the ups and downs, like everything collectively has been a blessing. Like, and it's because of my parents that I'm in this situation I am today. I'm so thankful for them.